No, 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 not yet. Hi, this is Karen, and this is the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. It is Saturday, the 15th of June, 2019, and today we have in our room Catherine, Christine, Deb, Dawn, uh, Ava, Ian, Ishmael, Jim, of course, uh, Micheline, Reinhard, Selesh, Sheer, and myself, Kara Newman. And then who do you have in your room, Jim? I have uh, Angela and Barb today. Oh, perfect. Okay. And just for some quick announcements before we get going, we've got the uh, webinar or the um, Ascension Workshop coming up August 8th through the 12th in Rochester, New York. Do you want to tell people a little bit about that or... Can Barbara? Yeah, so it's going to be at the Finger Lakes Hotel. It's going to be really nice. For, it's going to be, um, Max is going to come and do one of the classes. He's going to come in from San Diego. We might have Rob Gothier there. He's, he's uh, it depends on the baby situation, but he wanted to, uh, wants to come. So hopefully he'll make it. But I, I'm not, I'm not, not holding my breath. There's a lot going on. So also we have um, uh, many classes going on, and uh, so it, it's going to be really fun. And we have uh, we have several places left. As many people that want to come can come. It's five seventy five for the whole shebang, the room and uh, two meals a day. So it's a really good deal. We got a good deal from the from the uh, hotel. And I'm really excited about it. Perfect. Also, uh, Micheline, you want to tell them about the Heart and Solstice Retreat? Sure. Um, it's coming up actually next Friday. Um, and so it will be three days of gym channeling, galactic energy healing, kirtan, um, a lot of music and sound healing. Uh, there's raw food uh, prepared by a professional chef. So it's going to be a very nice time together. I wish we have a couple of spaces left if uh, anyone wants to sign up. We have a Facebook page, Heart and Solstice, and um, you can uh, actually just uh, on on that Facebook uh, page, you can, uh, all the information is there at, with a detailed schedule. So if anyone feels, you know, have, has a tug at their heart to come, please don't hesitate and contact whether Jim, Angie, or myself. Just, you can also just um, uh, write something on that Facebook page and I'll get back to you. Thanks. Excellent. It's going to be a very nice time. I feel a very strong and very warm energy toward it. The solstice is going to be a very powerful thing this year. It's the sixth. It's a it's a very special one because it's been six years and six months since the beginning of the ascension. So it's it's and everything is adding up to six during this time and six is a power number and so this is a very special solstice and i think anybody that wants to come should come if you feel any tug at your heart to go this is going to be a powerful one uh there's going to be angels there there's grindle's going to be there uh, i know that uh, many of the uh people that you love to talk and uh, uh to are going to be there and um I'm I'm really looking forward to it. It's 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 just going to be very special. Awesome. Yes, I just wanted to add that there are many Huclo members who are attending. I think we're over six people attending. So there's going to be a core, um, just a, a core group there that is very powerful. And um, yes, please, if you have a tug of the heart, do not hesitate to register. Perfect. Thank you so much. And then also, Ian, do you want to announce your Friday class if you're there? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, I can. I yeah, I'm here now. <laughs> um, every Friday, we every Friday afternoon at four thirty Eastern time, um, we have a channeling practice class. Uh, there's a Facebook page where we which how we communicate about 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 the class and post a Zoom link and when the classes are going to be. And the name of that page is Hukulo Channeling Practice Class. Um, sign up to become a member. And it's a, it's a safe place for us to would-be channelers and channelers alike. We also do a lot of light language at that class. So if you're interested, just sign up. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you. All right. That's perfect. Um, 
we can start with our blessings now. So we'll start with uh, Deb and we'll just do it in order. I'm not going to call on you, so pay attention. We'll do Deb, Don, uh, Reinhardt, and then we'll go to Barbara, and then we will come back to Micheline. Okay, go ahead, Deb. Thank you. Tayaka o naita o soi naika oa o ka ia so so naito o taya. Ayaka o naita o soi ta naika oa o na taita o saina. Namaste. Greetings. It's time for the galaxy to speak. And so therefore we are speaking and letting you know that we are coming as soon as possible. Be equipped to handle the changes. The alignment of suns from the center of the galaxy will be sending energy your way before very long. You will feel this energy and it will be enthusiast enthusiastic to you because a lot of uh, information will be coming with it and it will stay with you for a time. Those who are able to hear and and accept it will get much out of it. Go ahead, Reinhardt. Reinhardt's next. Find that all your heart energies are in alignment with these powers that are coming and know that you are blessed and know that this is a good time for all. Barbara, go ahead. Let the light and love be a part of you always. Temper all the things that you say so that they may know that you are coming from a place of love. Sometimes it is hard to feel the love that you are trying to express, but you must now be the example to the world and to all those around you without speaking that you are haughty or that you have pride, but that you are humbled and are filled with the spirit that is coming to own the world. Thank you. And now Micheline has a special uh, energy uh, sending and tribute to one of our dear Hukalo members. Uh, go ahead, Micheline. Yes, we are dedicating blessings to our sister Marlene, who is celebrating the life of her son today sending her courage, strength, lightness of heart, and all of our love and light. Namaste. Alashasano akoshi ikisika. Anuka asanuka ashisini malen. Ashosini ashisana ashosi. Anuki a asoli kishisinako. Akosinika ashosiniki. Anosa ashosoli isiniki rashasa. Anashasoli akashasako ishisiki. Namaste. We celebrate a young heart that has passed into the next realm. He is doing well and is happy to be there. But those that he has left behind sometimes suffer and feel sorrow and, and they miss him very dearly. But remember this, he is in a good place and his love for you continues to be there. And you can remember him fondly for all the great things that he has brought to you. It is better to have known him 
than to not have known him. And it has, as he has passed, he is letting you know the treasure that he was. Thank you, sir, very much. Okay. Um, so we will, I'll just read out the, um, the requests for today. And so yes. we can see who comes through. Uh, we have Ish, Tukur, Elijah, Einstein's first wife. Her name was uh, Maleva. Maleva. Thank you very much. Uh, Yeshua, Horus, Moses, Saint Germain, um, the Andron civilization, and Athena. Those were the requests. Very good. Yeah. I, I will uh, go into a little meditation now, and we'll see who comes through. All right. Perfect. Much love to everyone. Much love to you, and we'll see you uh, in a little while. Yes. Have a good session, everyone. You might want to shut the door. I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay. I am here briefly from the Androne people. Thank you. Are you, can, do you have, you go by a name or are you only a collective energy? We are a collective energy, but we do have our individuality. So we only come together in times that is necessary for all brains and thought processes to unite. But mostly, we are individuals. My name is Mato. Mato, it's very nice to have you here. Thank you and much love to you for being here with us. Uh, you were requested from someone in our YouTube chat. So if that person would please type their question, that would be very good. And in the meantime, if anyone else has a question, please. Well, I have something to say. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. I want to let you know that we are now aware of you in a very different way than we ever have been before. We understand that you have some great gifts for the galaxy and possibly the universe. We are not part of your particular galaxy, but we see that what you have to offer will be of great value to all throughout the universe at some time in the future. I, Mahal, am, am grateful to you for all the things that you are attempting to do and all the alignments that you are attempting to bring. These things make us happy, for we are enlightened to the point that we can understand these particular offerings to the universe and galaxy. Your people are necessary, and we hope that you continue in, in the path that you have uh, set for yourselves, and God has set for you as well, if that is what the name that you prefer to call him. He goes by many, many names, we know him differently than you do, for we are from a different realm and we see a different aspect of him than you do. But that is all right. Now, if there are any questions for us, we are willing to entertain them. Um, well, I have a question. So what is it that Earthlings are doing that is so encouraging to you, your perspective? Well, they are changing. They are changing their perspective. But what it is that fascinates us is they have become 
as beings and as a DNA source, a great uh, remedy to the galaxy, if they donate their, or I should say your, I sh if you donate your DNA to any portion of an alien civilization, they can make a serum that will actually advance health and immune systems and different things of this nature. This is a very valuable thing for everyone. Even our people may benefit from it eventually. Is there illness in your civilization? There is. There is illness in all civilizations. Sometimes illness comes suddenly from places that you do not expect. From <coughs> within the earth, when there are many volcanoes or earthquakes, there is bacteria within, the, within your planet that is not available readily on the surface. And so therefore it is released and can cause disease. And therefore, um, there are sicknesses and illnesses that we still have not overcome because they have come uh, suddenly from places within the earth or from uh, outside our planet when people visit. Understood. Um, I'm waiting to see. Uh, there's a question from Lilypad. She says, what kind of being or realms are you? Are you what kind of being are you and what realms are you? from and what do you offer humanity she wants to know or what if you would be willing what would you want to offer humanity well we offer you information for one thing if you would ask you always must ask for what you need if it is appropriate we will be able to give you some tools to work with to keep yourself alive during uh, periods of great danger with the sun and with other beings, etc. However, you do have to ask, and we will give you the appropriate help. Do not expect us to give you advanced information, for that is not permitted. And it is not necessary, because you would not understand it anyway. But we will give you what we can to help you advance. Okay, and as far as um, as a being, what what kind of being are you? A bipedal? Uh, yeah, humanoid or? We, are, we are corporeal, bipedal. We have arms and legs, but we are in a higher dimension than you, and we can uh, change our form to one other form if we wish. That is something you must decide at an early age. It is difficult for some early age adolescents to decide what other form they wish to change to, but only one is allowed. And it must come at an early age, for that is when their innocence is still there and their thought processes are changing from childhood to adulthood. This is a period of time when there is much confusion. But out of this confusion, we have forced them to think carefully about what choice to change. And this sometimes helps them to mature more quickly. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a question from the person who actually requested you. Uh, Curious Light is the name. He said, how is uh, his, his, his hybrid children, uh, how are they doing? Um, that's the, hybrid children pro the hybrid child program has just recently been accepted uh, worldwide by our people. But there have been many... Uh, hybrid children born and they are fine. We have found that that is the other thing uh, that you have given to the universe is hybridization, which we can actually uh, find that 
the hybrid children are more advanced than regular children on our world by about 12 to 15 percent. This brings a great need for study and understanding of these children, not that we make them guinea pigs or things of that nature, as you would call them, but we do study them in a very remote way. Your children are fine. What are the names of your children? Do you know them? I do not know the name of the child. Uh, so Is it only one or more? We, the question goes like this, and this is where I'm confused. He says, how is me and Wilson, Wilson's android hybrid child? Children. So it's, I guess. I know who that is. Yes, I know who that is. Jonathan sent this. Um, okay. He would like to know about his hybrid children, and they are fine. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, what is the theory on why the hybrid children are more advanced than the, your terrestrial children, considering you're a more advanced race than us? When those that are awake in your civilization or have greater fourth dimensional energy access ask for hybrid children, then there are there is that additional thought process that enters the hybrid child and is multiplied in our atmosphere or our region. I'm not sure how to state it, but in our energy so that they are advanced in many ways. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, there was a question that says, uh, I don't know if this is something for you, but um, it's a question about Nagas. Is that something for you? Nagas or are a species of snake-like beings. Right. We are aware of them. They are not in our galaxy, but they are well known in several galaxies. There are different Naga species and more than one planet. So they um, have primitive forms up to very high and elevated forms. What is the question? Well, the question was just basically, they want to know about the Nagas. <laughs> People aren't asking questions, they're making statements. So there wasn't actually a question. She says, what can you say about the Nagas at this moment? <laughs> we are in touch with them. We have peaceful agreements with them. They are an ally. We appreciate their uh, beings and goodness, their energy, their kindness and compassion. Um, we are more advanced than they are, but that is not really the point. They are an ally with us. Okay. Um, there was a question from Lily, Pat, also saying, if they were to request a DNA infusion from your race, is that a possibility or something that is something that could be done? It would have to be treated and processed because our DNA would not go into you so easily. That is how we did it with the hybrid children. We hit, filtered out some of the very negative things from your species. And that is another reason why the children are so advanced. But yes, you may have some of our DNA, but it will have to be filtered and made usable to your species. Okay, all right. So is one of the reasons you took the hybrid children off planet is because they couldn't really function in this uh, environment? No, they are on planet. I did not say that we removed them from the planet. Oh, they're here in this uh, planet? No, they are on ours. They were born that's here. What that's what I meant. So that's why they're on your planet and not on ours. They were born here, yes. Yes, okay. Right, perfect. All right, and um, there's a question about, Lily is asking, and I don't, again, know if this is something you can answer, but she's saying, what is the relationship between the Nagas and her, and what do they want from her? Uh, I'm not... I'm not attuned to her energy at this right. moment. Exactly. Thank so you. So I cannot give an answer for that. 
Yeah. Um, for the people in the chat, it would be very good if you asked questions that were relevant to the to the being coming through. Um, it's a they are not aware of who I am. Yes, they, exactly. They do not know who I am, and they do not know of us. Exactly. So therefore, the questions can be irrelevant at exactly. times. Can you describe yourself as a being? I know you said you've got. Are you? Do you look human? Do you? How? What is your physicality like? And we have to human. No. Okay. Our our features are very slight. We have very small eyes, very small features. So we do not look human. We look, but our head is larger with smaller features. And therefore, we do look odd to your people as you look odd to us. Right. We have toys that are in the shape of humans, <laughs> and the children play with them and laugh because they look silly. But <laughs> We do have larger heads with smaller features. Our bodies are similar to humans. We do have very similar uh, shape in body and we do have organs, but not as many as you do. Some of our organs have multifunctions so that we need less organs than you do. That is something that happens with evolution. The spleen, the liver, and the gallbladder are all in one, as you would call them. We have two hearts, the heart divided, the left ventricle and right ventricles, and right aorta and left aorta are separate. The two are on one side and two are on the other side of, of the spine. The reason for this is for, um, it is much safer if one part of the heart should fail, the other heart can take over. Just like you have two kidneys, we also have two kid hearts, two kidneys, and duplicate of other things. We are what you call, what is it that is? Dual balanced? What? It's a dually balanced, so you have right and left. <laughs> balanced symmetrical. We're not symmetrical completely okay the this there is other the intestines are smaller because we eat less and what we eat is more protein and more um vegetable at this time and it does not need to be digested fully to be uh appropriately given to the body because the body is more efficient. I understood. Okay. The pancreas and other, uh, there are some things that are also, uh, the pancreas, what you call the pancreas, is very small in our bodies and we do not have some things like tonsils or adenoids or things of that nature that has been taken care of by evolution. Mm. Uh, is your race, are you sportive or do you, are you sportive? Are you very movement oriented? Because we're very physical. We, can, we know how physical that you are. We can move one place to another with our minds and we can um, transport there with telekinesis, moving movement of our own body instead of movement of things around us, which we also have, but do not use very often, or it can be dangerous. But we can move ourselves to other places. But first, we must make sure that the route is clear, because the, if something is in our way and we pass through it, it could possibly harm us, depending on what it is. So yeah. therefore, we are very careful about our movement this way. Many glide and move themselves very slowly through this, our world. But our arms are very kinetic and very moving because we do have jobs that do work with the arms and hands and brains. And there are things that we do do on our planet that are requiring these elements. 
Because hmm. we're because we like to run and jump and climb and sport and swim and do all these, these things. These things are still possible in on our planet, okay. but some do not want their legs to be uh, used for these things, but others do. It is a personal choice. Okay. Okay. So I was just wondering if there was the same joy in the physicality that we experience I mean, here. I mean, enjoy it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a question, and maybe you can answer this, that says, uh, how adaptable to different alien DNAs are human bodies really? Many. The reason for this is because the, of the way that your species was seeded. The Anunnaki took portions of many different um, DNAs to form what is now the perfect human, as they would call it. The imperfect human and the perfect human are the same because perfection is in the eye of the beholder. There is no such thing as perfection unless you see it as the best possible uh, quality that can be achieved. Okay, perfect. Um, Ian has a question. Go ahead, Ian. Thank you. Um, I, you mentioned the Anunnaki and the creation of human. Do you know if the Anunnaki has created any other species of alien? Well, they're very self-absorbed. And when they go places, they want the, everyone to look like themselves. They're responsible for other species looking more humanoid and bringing the same kind of uh, DNA infusions to them, but not in the same way that they have brought it to your planet. Your planet was much more special in that it worked much better with the atmosphere and with the all the elements that were there did not work as well on other on other planets and so yours is closest to perfection did they have any involvement with the pleiadians the pleiadians are who they are the the pleiadians were already advanced when the anunnaki came to them so they were not allowing the anunnaki to make any changes but they are allies Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, there's a question from Cami, and it's a good question. It says, uh, is the creation of hybrids common when a species is contacted and welcomed into the galactic community? It is more common now with your species. Many other species are not interested in hybridization as much. There are a few. But with your species, it seems to be a great interest. And it does have great value in the galaxy and universe. So, yes. Okay, thank you. And then. I wanted to uh, add something to that last. I'm sorry I interrupted. No, no, I go ahead. I wanted to add something about the Anunnaki and the Pleiadians. There sure. are several different kinds of Pleiadians. I was talking about the blue Pleiadians and also the tall and the small blue Pleiadians. When the Anunnaki, Anunnaki met the white Pleiadians and the green Pleiadians, they were also on not such even keel, but they were not as advanced as some of the other Pleiadians, as you understand. So they did try to tamper and work with their DNA, but uh, the blue Pleiadians cut that off because the Pleiadian realm was unified. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's a question from um, Family Glum. He says, uh, are there wormhole parts in our DMA, DNA? Wormhole parts? Yes, pairs, wormhole pairs, excuse me. Yes, there is everything in the universe in your DNA in some fashion not in great amounts perhaps microscopically but everything in the universe is in every being because there is no way to avoid it when a planet is or a sun is created all elements of the universe 
are fed into that source of uh, before it is ignited or or before it combusts. And therefore, yes, all forms of things and dust from the universe are there and spew out and become. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a question uh, It says, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Catherine has a question. Go ahead, Catherine. Thanks, greetings. Uh, thank you. I have a question about, you spoke earlier that you see what we call God or source in a different aspect. I was wondering if you could explain that a little bit further, if there are words that you could use yeah. to describe it. When we speak of God, he is more interactive than he is with your species, at least according to what we have sensed in your feelings. We have analyzed many humans individually, and they have all different visions of who God is and what God is. And so on our world, there is more of an even thought process about God in general. We have evolved into a one God people with several lower gods that we do acknowledge because they do have God qualities but they are actually aliens that have achieved great uh, and intellect and great height and they are to be admired for that for their ability to survive long enough to achieve this so there are minor gods as we would call them but we interact with god in a much more personal way than it appears that you do when we look at some of your people, it would appear that there were, are some that are interactive, but only in event kinds of activities. It would appear they would feel him and then it would go away. Or he, they would feel him and then they would go through times of complete um, desolation or emptiness from him. So we are much different in the fact that we have a closer relationship and we do not ever feel that he is apart from us because he has made himself fully aware in many ways. Thank you very much. Does that answer your question? Yes, very thoroughly. Thank you. You are welcome. Next, we have a question from the YouTube chat. Uh, this is Ian. I'm going to be filling in for Karen. And then what would be the interaction like between humans and Anunnaki in the far future if they did interact? They will come back to your world. They are um, aware of who you are and what is going on with you, but they do not want to come back yet. They are predicted to come back at different times. And many say, oh, they're all, the planet X or Nerubu is there. They are not wanting to interact with you yet. Their planet is out of phase with third dimension. And you will not see it when it come, returns. And they will make themselves third dimensional when they do. And you will know it when they come. Before, because they will judge you in some ways. They are very critical of their own creations. They feel that they have created you in some ways, although your God has much to do with how they are created. So they acknowledge that, and they acknowledge that they are created by God as well, but yet they want to take credit for many other things. And some of those things would include yourself. Okay, thank you for that. Next, we do have a question from Sheer. Greetings. Greetings. Um, actually, I have two questions. Uh, the first of uh, the first question is: You mentioned that you acknowledge God and some minor gods. Can you? Please expand who are those minor gods that you acknowledge? The minor gods are those species 
that have attained godlike abilities. We do give them uh, what is due to them. They were able to reach that height of existence by evolution through millions of years. And they have not reached God level completely, but they can do God-like things. And so they are honored for that. Can you give an example, like names of those races or individuals? You may know some of them. You, you speak here with Almatok and his species, and Remulak and his species. They have attained somewhat godlike abilities. And so, therefore, we do give them honor for that ability to reach such heights in their evolution without destroying themselves. There are many species that we know of and have seen self-destruct because they are not wise enough to understand how to not destroy themselves. But these are species that have risen to the heights that they can control matter, control many different things above the abilities that we are able to do in a fashion that is godlike. I see. Also, um, it's not really of the subject, but uh, it's something that I really want to ask. Um, in the last couple of days, I have very vivid dreams. And I think that two days or three days ago, uh, I had a dream when I saw very vividly uh, a spaceship. I was on the top of a building. There were some um, planes that were crashing from the sky. I have no idea why, but I do remember that I've seen a spaceship like I've never seen before, very close to me, like maybe uh, 30 meters away from me. All of it, the, the color, the shape, and... I was very amazed by it. Can you tell me maybe? Well, let me tell you this. There are many of you that three or four days ago, three days to be exact, have gone through an energy shift just like you have. I could, I bet I could, I bet uh, many of you could say that within the last few days, an energy shift has come to you. And this is something that is well known with all peoples that are watching you. There is a pre-wave. The pre-wave is something ahead of the wave that is coming during this solstice period. The pre-wave has activated many of you. And I see that your activation was true. You saw ships from other galaxies as if they were close up, but you had actually traveled to them. This was uh, a gift to you, and there will be more gifts coming, and more activations will be given very close to the solstice. A wave will be hitting your planet that will bring a great amount of information it will be very slow. It will be very informational, very positive, and very renewing. Many of you are already feeling that and anticipating that something positive is coming. There will be those that are trying to put a negative spin on that and saying that something negative is coming, but it's actually something very, very positive. I was not going to talk about this because I did not think it was my place. But they have told me that this information is necessary for many of you. For you are here in this realm with this kind of fourth dimensional energy available to you. And you will be rewarded as you have been uh, awakened long or a for a while, let's put it that way. And so, as you have been awakened for a while, this wave 
will be for you. Thank you very, very much. You're Next, we have, we have a question from Trinity Morgan, uh, who asks, can you, can you please explain what 4D is like and how different from 3D from physical to spiritual? I have a question. My name is Micheline. Greetings. Hello. There's two people asking questions at once. Oh. I'll let the other person go. Continue with the first question. Yes. Um, it, yes. Hello. I. You were talking about changes in. No, it was not you. Are you oh. not hearing the questions? The question. No, I'm not. I apologize. I'll just step out. And for just a moment, please. The question comes from Trinity, Trinity Morgan, who asks if you can please explain what 4D is like and how different from 3D from physical to spiritual. Well, we are actually in five dimension. Four dimension is different in uh, many ways from your third dimension and spiritually different as well. But how can you explain the differences when you are, are not there? It's difficult to say. I could explain it to you, but you being in third dimension will not understand the fullness of what I say. In fourth dimension, you will be able to move more freely through some items, but those items have be, been prepared for you to move through. This is something of the future and a different kind of science than you are aware of. You cannot imagine what it is like to move through things, although there are some in your dimension that have trained their mind in open places in their brain to be able to do this, but there are very few because they are uh, becoming other dimensional already. If you, re if you open that space within your brain that helps you to walk through things, then you are already using much fourth dimensional energy. Now, the spirits that is there for fourth dimension is the same spirit that you have in third dimension. However, you perceive the spirit differently there. And I cannot tell you how that is because you are in third dimension and are not sensing it as a fourth dimensional being. These things are hard to explain to third dimension for they are not able to be felt or perceived properly. All right, the next question, I believe, yes. Go yes, ahead. the next question. All right, um, about the, the shifts that you're talking about, I've noticed something, something on a physical level, which is not as pleasurable, I would say, and then something more of like of a psychic level about um, ascending energy um, from a distance and it, it, it really surprised me something happened on Wednesday evening is that what you're talking about is yes it happened this Wednesday all right okay I, I um, th that would be the end of my questions because the other person uh, asked some of what I wanted to hear thank you okay the, the answer to you is this though there is a, a wave a small wave that came ahead of the wave that is coming it, it is being pushed out. Do you understand? This wave was pushed out from the regular wave because it is so strong. And this wave was very positive, but if you were in a negative frame or if you were, there was something negative happening, you may perceive it as a painful situation for the body. But the psychic and energy will come and show you that it is a, actually a positive thing. Many of you have experienced something Wednesday morning, evening. It would, it's different times in different places because the wave, you have different time zones. And so it will happen differently in each time zone. But for you, it was Wednesday and it was from morning till evening. 
Okay, and next we have a question. From Thank you very Dua. much. I'm having problems with my microphone, and I, I apologize. I cannot hear the person asking questions. I can only hear answers. Thanks. Yes, he, I understand. Yes, Go and the next, the next question is from Iwa. Hi, this is Eva. Um, I have a few questions. Um, she brought up a question within me about um, hearing ships actually because um about uh, three weeks ago i heard very weird sound in my head and then in a channeling session i asked and i was told that people who are connected to fourth dimensional energies can hear the sound of ships making when they come to close so that was very very strange sound but my question is how close those ships have to be to me for me to hear um, them? They just have to be in your region, which means within 50 miles. Okay, so quite close. And um, my other question is, how old is Terra Ha? The four Terra Ha is a new right? place, but it existed forever. It is just part of the next dimension. The next dimension has always been there, as all dimensions are there. Terra Ha, as you call it, is the next dimension of Earth, which has always been there, but it's new to you because you're just learning about it now. But it's always been there. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm asking, because I've heard that fascinating lecture this morning, and um, uh, this this person was saying that the spiritual people, kind of not spiritual, religious people who think that the Earth is 6,000 years old, they might be describing the spiritual aspect of it, but it looks like that it's not Taraha. They are just completely talking about something else. That's completely different. They are talking about their awareness. They're only aware of 6,000 years, so that's all that exists for them. Okay, so it's a different story. Yes, um, so your Earth is over 4.5 billion years old. All right, well, my um, last question is about the inner Earth, the ho hollow air theory and uh, a theory that may, maybe there is another sun within the earth because there were pictures with uh, polar um, lights on both um, north and south um, of on the planet earth so there was no explanation to it i don't know if you can there are lights within your planet. There are beings that live within your planet. They are out of phase with your dimension. They are in fourth and fifth dimension. But there are artificial lightings there that they have brought with them from other places. It is not a sun, but it is artificial lighting that is bright as a sun could be because they need this light to survive, grow their plants, and live in a realm that is able to sustain itself. There are several of these under your planet, but I do not see that your planet is hollow, but it is within the earth of, as you call it, there are many hollow places. So the people who think that there is an opening to the earth in our, our Antarctic. Yes, there are Isn't openings. Correct? There are openings. Yes. And is it like a green area the there? Yeah, that's that's true. Yes. And what could create polar flares at the same time at North and South Pole? Because we have at this point, I see that there are ships. Your your planet has a dimensional shift going right through it from the north pole to the south pole it ships go through it 
And that is possibly what is being seen. Okay, well, thank you so much for all your answers. Thank you. It is unusual that your planet does have a dimensional shift that goes right through the poles. That is probably why it has a tendency to flip every several hundred thousand years, is because these poles can magnetize and uh, want to draw themselves to different angles. So I cannot explain it fully without going into scientific information, which you will probably not understand. Thank you for that. Our next question comes from Deb. Thank you. I, I'm not there. sure if this is an appropriate, I, if this is an appropriate question for you or not. Um, but I'm very curious. Last night we had um, visits in our bedroom by the fairy realm. And normally they're in a protective bubble. They were not in a protective bubble any longer. So something has changed on our planet and yes. i'm just wondering what happened why they're not protected any longer they're free from the bubble. They are. they are protected but they don't need a bubble to be protected any longer there is a shield around your planet that the seventh dimensional beings have put there to help protect you from wasadraka attacks if anything that is negative goes through this uh shield it is instantly there's instant notification of it so the elementals do not have to wear or be a part of a protective uh, process any longer with the bubbles now there are ways to get through uh, to attack people through this shield if they know how to manipulate wormholes wormholes will not show up going through this particular shield. They will show up next to the person and attack them that way. There is other uh, protection coming to humans, but they have not uh, perfected it yet. Only some creator beings that are very uh, valuable have this protection, and it still has to be updated and made better. But attacks are still happening, with the Wasadraka and other species because they open up wormholes within your realm. This has to be uh, taken care of, but the seventh dimensional beings are working on even greater protection. But the Wasadraka is not attacking any of the uh, elementals, so they are actually not worried about that. Thank you. I was just curious because, I mean, for the last year they were in a bubble and now all of a sudden they're not. And it was yes, really. Yes, they will not point. need it. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, we have another question from a YouTube chat. And it comes from, I apologize if I mispronounce the name, but from Krilek Tekan. And the question is, do spaceships with conscious intelligence have souls compared to those with artificial intelligence? What's the difference between artificial intelligence and conscious intelligence? Well, those ships that have biological information in them so that only those that, can, that are running the ship can access certain areas of the ship. This kind of uh, biological uh, additions to the ship is not conscious necessarily or does not have a soul i should say but is uh activated electronically and dna is that the the dna within the ship is activated and made conscious for just a few moments so that it can access the technology for those to get in what happens is this the people that are, or the beings that are driving the ship will put their DNA into the ship and uh, they, it, they will have it said that the, the, they are the, the only ones that can uh, control what happens with the ship. 
In engineering, it's the same way. Uh, they put their DNA into the ship so that only the ones that are allowed to do engineering will be there and will have access. So this is how they use DNA in a non-soulful way, but just for access and identification so that the right people will be able to run certain areas of the ship. If intruders come, they will not be able to run the ship. Only those that are that have DNA within it. So therefore, it's much more protected. Now, with an android, they are given intellectual thought processes, and they are given different kinds of intellect, and sometimes emotion can be added, but the soul does not come until they are aware of uh, that they are a being. If they have no awareness of being, then the soul has not entered. Continue. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. The next last question that we have uh, is comes from the YouTube chat. It comes from a lady by the name of Anna White, and she just asked, "Does she have a hybrid child?" Ah, uh, I will check. Thank you. She does with the Fendorian people that are in the Gurkfik near Alliance. She is not aware of what species. She thought it was another species, but it is Fendorian. Are you okay. there? Yes, thank you very much for that. And that concludes our questions for right now. Then I shall go. It was a pleasure to speak with you, and I hope that you have gained some information through our connection. Thank you very much for coming. We blessed be, and we always appreciate you. You're welcome to come back anytime. Thank you. Thank you. What a strange awareness. I am Helena. Welcome. <clears throat> you will call me Helena. Okay, Helena. Do you have a statement you wish to start with? All right. I am here to bring you some clarity. It is a strange realm in which you live. When we were on your planet long ago, it just doesn't seem that long ago, but in your realm, it is long ago. We were not aware of the kind of people that you would eventually become. And so therefore we were not careful with you and we have paid a price for that. We apologize. And we are working to be more 
friendly and more aware of who you are. Please help us to know you better. We, we want to come to an equal plane with you. Although we are an advanced species, that does not mean that you are not equal in value. Your value is great. And we appreciate that and we honor it. Are there any questions for me? I don't have any questions, right? Actually, I just got one. Thank you. Um, from Sheer, we have a question. Sheer. Greetings. Uh, you said that your name is? Helena. And you said that you came to our world very long ago. Can you expand on that? Which race are you? Who were you? In the area of the Greeks. I was considered very wise, but also a goddess of war. So I took and blessed the warriors of that time. And that was an irresponsible thing to do because your people were, were necessary, needed peace more than war. But I actually stirred war up within your people. Um, are you Athena or Helena, or is it the same? We are the same. And are you from the same race of Zeus or a different race? Yes. And tomorrow I have a test. Can you help me with the test as the goddess of wisdom? Wisdom is different than intellect. But yes, I have intellect as well. I know, and tests are very different from intellect as well, but any help <laughs> will be <laughs> will be much appreciated tomorrow. There are many names that I took on this planet. Athena and Helena. There was, Athena is actually more appropriate as I think about it. I am the goddess of wisdom and war. Helena was a little different, when a, a different persona for me, but we were the same. Thank you. Okay, next we have a question from Catherine. Greetings, uh, how are you? I am very well, thank you. And yourself? Doing well, thank you for asking. I have a couple of questions. First of all, what is wisdom to you? Wisdom is knowing what to do properly at the right time. How to decipher the right answer with questions instead of judgment. Excellent answer. And I have another question regarding what was your interaction with humans as well as other entities that we associate with Athena and Zeus, the other uh, quote unquote Greek gods as we call them? We had interactions with humans that were appropriate at times and inappropriate at times. We had children with humans that perhaps we should not have had and they were actually did not last too long in this realm because they could not um, they could not understand it and they could not uh, physically stay here there are many things that we did with your people we taught them too much all of it was negative in some ways how to make swords how to make better swords how to make better ways of war and then be how to strategize about it and then with my wisdom how to know with how to make things even better so that the war would exist longer
Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, next we have for a question is from JLo. Hi. Greetings. Thank you for coming through. Interestingly enough, I yeah. thought about my younger sister. And this might be something that will tickle her brain, so to speak, or stimulate her in some way. Yes. Emotionally. Would you or your civilization, for that matter, happen to have a connection with her? Something. And thank you. And what is her name? Her name is Jennifer. Ah, we've had connections with many humans yes. before and after our time on this planet. And some call upon us still that that want connections with us to understand how we feel and how we are, how we are able to move and be with your people. And I am with Jennifer sometimes, yes. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Yes, he is dealing with us appropriately. The next question we have from, comes from the YouTube chat from Lilypad, and her question is, what is her re relationship with you, and can you please help her with the crystal, and why are you so recently on her mind? I am on many people's minds right now, and your crystal is empowered. There, there is now a message for you in it. I am related to you in many fashions. You were around during the Greek period where I, when I was there, and at times we interacted. Okay. The next question we have from Steve Robert Martin is, will the people within the Pentagon try to suppress Louis Elzondo's UFO disclosure uh, be overturned soon? On your planet, there is coming a time of great information about these things. People already know that UFOs exist and that aliens are there. This information will just re-establish a greater belief. And yes, it will be permitted to enter in, into the, the realm at some point. The information is rather poignant in the sense that it is true proof that aliens interact with humans, true proof that ships exist from different places, and true proof that um, first contact is imminent. Next question from Peter is asking if you are currently in the physical incarnation and what is your current involvement in Earth's humanity? I can hear is rather poignant in the sense that it is true. I can hear it being repeated, something. Yes, I just muted someone's mic. Oh, yes. Um, one moment, please. I am within your realm to help with information and to make up for the wrongdoings of the past. I am incarnated with several aspects of myself, four to be exact. Those four know who they are, and I can speak through them. They feel my essence and understand who I am in many ways. What else do you need to know? I will not name them because they there are others that believe that they have the essence of me that may not. And I do not want to discourage anyone from drawing on the familiarity of my energy that might be in their area. 
One more question to follow up from Peter is what species exactly were you when you incarnated on Earth as Athena? Zeus and the 12 from our species that were here were from a planet in your galaxy called Arcadia. Um, it is a planet. It's not known as Arcadia to the humans, but that is the name we gave it. And now it, uh, we have, some of us have come back to help with humanity at this time. It is the proper time for us to make amends. Okay, wonderful. The next question we have is from Trinity Morgan, which is, what was the ultimate purpose of the Greek gods? And were they gods in your realms or did we just consider you gods? What planet were you from? Arcadia um, is the planet. And we wanted you to see us as gods because we were, that is, we were not gods, but we played them on your planet. We wanted to feel the power, the energy that it was, that it was like to be with a, a more primitive species that would depend on us and that we would have total control over. And that was wrong. And it was negative. But you didn't see us all as so negative. We did have a positive side. We had a loving side. We had a a a good uh, a good sense with humans also. But what we ultimately came to do is rule as for a while. Okay. Next in the room here, we have Christine, who has her question next. May I call you Athena? You may call me, me whatever you wish. <laughs> well, blessed be to you. Um, I was wondering, the Amazons during the um, Greek and Roman times, um, they had asked for your protection. Did you help them? Were you involved in their... Um, in their uh, the, uh, the Amazons were at war. And yes, I did help them, but only to make the war a little worse. <laughs> but I did help them make better spears. I helped them with their strategies. One, I was on both sides of the of the of the coin, so to speak, and was able to win both of their trusts. When um <clears throat> they were starting to be overrun by the Greeks or the, Ro the Romans. Um, they fled to um, China, where, um, where Genghis Khan um, valued them as warriors. Um, it was, were you part of their strategy to, um, to save their life themselves by running over to uh, another place? That was their idea. I would have had them stay where they were, but I saw they went to another warlike fashion, uh, faction, and so that was pleasing enough. I see. Thank you. Uh, yes, next. I was, yeah, I was not, not very happy with peace at that time. I think I had a lot of anger issues. <laughs> Next, hopefully she can hear me. Lucia, you are next with your question. Yes, hello. Hello, Athena, greetings. I was greetings, wondering, Lucia. you were talking about Arcadia earlier. How do we know that planet? To, uh, how do humans call that planet? They don't know of this planet by, you cannot see it with your mm, telescopes yet, but it is okay. in a different galaxy than this one. All right. Um, also, you spoke about aspects that you can give human beings. Yes. Could you I explain, have... yes, how that is done and if it is different or the same as fractals? Thank you. It is the same as fractals, if you wish. 
and it is done through um, technology and with spiritual help as well. And, and I, how is it? Yes, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I was just going to say it's very difficult to explain it, but those that have it will have the wisdom that is necessary and, and thought processes that are necessary to bring knowledge to this planet that is needed. Is it given to the soul before incarnation? It can, or it can be given to those that are permitted to have it and have earned it. And so it is possible, so that I, I understand, um, it is possible once we are incarnated to be given aspects of different beings. Yes, it is. That's very interesting. It and is. <laughs> yes. Um, also, I am wondering if you recognize my energy in any way. I do recognize your energy. You've been around in many different places. You have uh, traveled through many lifetimes on in this world and have achieved much in the knowledge and understanding of it. This lifetime is a harsh one for you, but it will pay off in the next life. But yes, we knew each other in the Greek world. We knew each other in the Egyptian era, the Roman era, and also the Atlantean era. Um, I'm, I'm wondering now that we, we know each other so well. Um, now, when you were Athena, is that, then you also, you reincarnated into other beings and it, well i changed my identity i didn't reincarnate on your planet i came from um arcadia and changed identities a few times but uh that's not the same as reincarnating okay all right well thank you very much for uh, answering my questions Blessings. You're welcome. <laughs> the next question comes from the YouTube chat from Jesse, from Jess M, I should say. The question is, what healing abilities do you have? And could you please assist in unblocking and healing my crown chakra? Thank you and much love. Jesse. All right, I do have healing abilities because all beings are gifted with it but you must use them to develop them. And on our planet, Arcadia, we have developed them quite well. And I can unblock your crown chakra. Sit very still, please. And I will just send you the energy of that. You will feel a swirling in your brain. It is a vortex that is clearing things out. The crown needs to be open always. You cannot live or die with it blocked. Not live properly, I should say. And you won't be able to die. It is clear. Thank you very much for that. Next, we have a question from Sheer again. Uh, greetings again, Athena. Um, you said a couple of things that spark some follow-up questions. Uh, first of all, uh, I didn't understand, did you reincarnate on the Earth or didn't you not? I did not reincarnate on the Earth. I changed identities on the Earth. I'm speaking about this time. I am not reincarnated aspects of me are in others i see i know that there are several others that send their aspects here like jesus uh, anubis and some others and they did reincarnate and supposed to get their aspects so how does it work like when you send um what i'm trying to say what is the meaning of sending uh, fractals or aspects and what happens to the person once he reunites with those aspects if he's been reincarnated 
At this point, I send out four aspects of myself, which are fractals, as you want to say, and they just give you, the person that has them, some of the ideas and elements of my personality that is needed for them to do their mission in a more uh, wonderful way. Now, I did not reincarnate on your planet ever. I have visited your planet many times, but I have not been a part of it as such, except when I was living there for, as an alien or a godlike being from another world. Now, we were not permitted. It was part of our punishment that we were not permitted to, to incarnate on your planet. But at this point, with our changes and our apologies, we are able to give fractals to those of you that are able to receive them and use them properly. I see. And also you mentioned that you were um, being in Atlantis and ancient Egypt. Can you tell me who you were in ancient Egypt? Was it um, written down in any text of, or something? Well, they knew who I was in ancient Egypt. Um, when we were there, I visited many different realms um, mm. as Athena. Mm. I could move easily from one place to another. We had that ability, and they knew me as Athena, but they didn't write me in their history. Uh, they knew me as Helena as well. I changed identities a couple times. But I also incarnated into Cleopatra uh, mm. once or twice. Just I, I walked in. She, she loved it. But... Yes, she did. All right. But no, they didn't see me as any other personalities but the ones that I mentioned. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And the next question we have from a YouTube chat from Peter P. The question is, it's his understanding that Athena is the planetary Christ and the, and the Cohen of the 11th ray of light. How can we work with you to embody higher aspects of Christ consciousness? Well, now I have more Christ consciousness than I did at one time. This is a new thing for me, a new energy for me. It is one that has come to our planet, but I did not embrace immediately. <coughs> but now that I have understood it better, I am embracing it in a different way. It is funny that you should mention that, for I am bringing a different kind of energy to this planet, and it will help with this planet. And do not worry, I will do the, what is necessary to bring what is necessary to your world. I, I prefer not to go into a deeper explanation of that at this time although there is greater and more abundant information about it. Okay, well, thank you for that. Thank you very much. Our and next question from the room is from JLo. Hi, so I have a few questions um, somewhat related to each other. So the first is that I recall and can still do this, and I believe everybody can see streaks of golden light and they connect to everything in that we have in this world and i know that in um, the greek times they would use them and they were considered gods the people who knew how to manipulate them and i find it so interesting in the abilities that you can use these um aspects um uh, that exist in our world and i was wondering if there was uh any place specifically where people still retain this information this information is coming back to your world it is something that is part of the very near future. You are seeing different things. I think you're seeing heart connections because those are golden lights. And you're seeing matrix uh, lights 
that go through every single part of the universe. Which of these is what you are seeing? I think it's the uh, matrix lights. Yes. Information about the matrix is becoming more and more available to this planet. And there is greater information at hand that will be presented very, very shortly. It is life-changing information. And if you already have vision of it, you will probably have more control of it than others. Thank you. And my um, second question was that I recall I had a dream uh, with... Uh, I, when, when I was Zeus, the god of, of, of lightning and of the sky, and I was just curious what my connection to that was um, all about. Your connection with that was that Zeus embodied, and we all did, embodied some spirits from this realm to help us access the realm in a better way. So we brought it on into us some human spiritual spirituality and some human uh, thought processes. You were part of the of uh, some DNA that Zeus acquired and used uh, for more power and more access to the human realm. You see, we did not understand humans in any way, shape, or form, so we had to access them by taking on some of their spiritual aspects by when they are, were dying to seize them uh, before they went to the Oversoul and use all the things that were of them to be part of our reign there. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Next, we have another question from Trinity Morgan. Um, as says Helena, can you please also help me clear my crown chakra? She says that she assured us that it is blocked. Thank you. All right, one moment. Let me see. All right, you're going to feel something, and it will be like a vortex in your brain. All right, it's clearing now. Thank you. I'm sure she, she's very grateful for that. Well, I have something to tell her. I'm As I was looking at her brain, there was much confusion about different things there. And, and I think that I, I can pull some of that away. You are not meant to be uh, someone that's complacent. You are not meant to be someone that follows. So... With this clearing of the crown, be happy, be positive, and be uh, someone that you like. Because I don't think you often like yourself, and you have to be that person. You have to like yourself and love yourself. And sometimes you don't, and you're not sure why. And, and you know what? I love you as who you are. So you must take into consideration that this blockage was causing a great deal of blockage to your love for yourself, your respect for yourself, and your need to be the leader that you are, and a great channeler as well. It's blocked your ability to channel where you wanted to, you really want to bring in great information, and it just was blocking everything. All right, very good, sorry. No problem. Are we ready for the next question? Yes. Okay, the next question comes from Pete Andrew. It says, first request is that there are beings that are bothering me, and the moment I transmit a connection to my twin soul and the Federation, the energy gets scrambled due to these beings, and, is and I'm asking for help to remove them, please. Let me see who they are. What was the name? Uh, the name was Pete Andrew. They are Viril. 
The real are well known in the universe. They travel in uh, groups and they are very bacteria ridden and have a lot of viruses on them. So I am going to clear them away from you. They're also in a different realm. So, but if they come to third dimension, they can become third dimensional. And that is illegal at this time, but they can do it and cause people to become very ill. So I'm going to get rid of them for you. All right, they won't be able to stay in your area at all. Now remember, there are th third dimensional things working with you as well that are not so positive. It is not always them that you're feeling, but there are some third dimensional things that are also making you very upset. So these beings are gone. Deal with your third dimension in the way that you should now. Don't you won't be able to they they won't be a part of it anymore so they're gone okay thank you very much and since we've had the requests for the first chakra healing we've had a number of other people wanting to have their crown chakras cleared is it possible to do a group healing for all of us to get our crown chakras cleared this of seems course. to be a big concern thank you All of you say your names out loud. You don't have to tell this gentleman, but you have to say your names out loud so I can hear them in my mind. Angela. Bring your consciousness up to your crown. Feel the vortex, let it work, let it work. There is a couple of you that didn't get it. Hold on. Let the vortex work, let it work. Anyone didn't get it? I see that most of you did. You all did. Yeah. Good. If Thank anyone you. did, please let me know. But I think you all did. I don't see anything out there. I see everyone with a, a vortex on their head. So I'm witnessing that a lot. Wonderful. Thank you very much for that. And we have one question left in the room from Deb. Yes. Thank you, Athena. Um, in my home, um, we have many, many energies that are up, up every day, um, besides the uh, the fairy realm. Um, but and I used to be able to channel, and I don't know why I'm not able to channel uh, in the last month or two months at all. I, I feel the energies. There is an energy coming for you to to replenish you. It is something within you in your third dimensional thought process. There is something within you that you have to clear. Let me look. It's an, a guilt or a, something of you're blaming yourself for something. There's something that you're blaming yourself with for. There's something very personal there, and it is blocking all things in the psychic realm. You cannot do anything in the psychic realm, can you? 
Um, that is correct. It is blocking all things. And I want to clear that for you, all right? Yes, please. Tell yourself this. I want you to tell yourself that all things are well, all things are positive, and that you have been forgiven and you will forgive yourself, and that these energies will return to where they belong. There is something around you also blocking that, and I will get rid of that as well. But there is an energy coming in just a few days, five or six days, that will really reestablish this strongly. Strongly reestablish you in the fourth dimension. But right now, I'm sending you energy the way I do it. Did you feel that? Yes. Good. Let it work. It's a clearing, a slow clearing, because you have to be cleared slowly from this. It has to move things out of you. Let it work. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let it work. Thank you. Don't feel it. Mm -hmm. uh, many other people also felt that. Okay, so and now, thank you for that. We are coming up um, towards the top of the hour. We have about another ten minutes left, which would probably be a good time to start closing with blessings. There is one question in the room here. Okay, let's hear. Let's hear those. Hi, Athena Barbara. Uh, my question is, is there any information I need to know to help me on my path or within myself? Because I'm having a hard time. I can channel galactic languages, but I'm having a hard time letting myself open for those to come in to channel with me. I was able to do it once, but I have not been able to do it again. You are in your own way. You are doubting that it is possible to bring in strong information. You're saying to yourself, this is not of who I am, okay. but yet the energies are saying different. There is information and there's, I'm saying this to uh, many of you out there that are doubting your channeling abilities. You're saying, I don't know how to bring in higher information. I am not a higher information person. Wrong. You are a higher information person. You just have to believe that the information that can come through you is higher. It may not seem higher to you when you're saying it, but when you're saying it, it's higher. It's elevated because the, the, the source behind the message is elevated. Mm -hmm. So your message is entirely elevated to another level that you can't know in yourself at that moment. Allow, bring those messages forth. Let yourself be higher because this is not you speaking. It is someone else speaking through you. You don't have to be higher. You can let them be higher and you can let them bring the elements of knowledge to others, of peace of wisdom, of understanding. So don't doubt yourself in your channeling because of you don't think you're smart enough or you don't think that elevated messages can come through. But this is the time for all of you to let go of all that doubt and fear and you're, you're just doubting yourself. You're not let you're getting in your own way and you're any uh, many of you in your third dimension get in your own way. And this is just how you're doing it in the fourth dimension. You're getting in your own way 
even in the fourth dimension. So let it all go. Clear yourself. Know yourself. Know who you are. Completely know yourself. And I think you do know that you can bring in higher messages. You're just saying, how do I do it? How do I do it? Let it happen. Because your message will be elevated by those that come through. Now, clearing of the crown chakra, is that going to help me? Clearing of your crown chakra. I'm surprised that so many of you asked for that. Because many of you did have problems in the crown chakra because that is the area of creative thought of understanding of psychic abilities you think the third eye is the understanding of psychic abilities no the third eye is the activation and doing all the things in the in the psychic realm but the crown helps you understand it all so the crown to be cleared will help you understand what exactly you can do live it i'm oh, not only talking to you but to them because many of these personal questions can be given to all elevate elevate let yourself get out of your way now that your crown chakra is open let that create creativity seep through let the confidence of the third and crown chakra, uh, the, the third chakra is your drive and all that, but connect it to your crown chakra mm -hmm. and let your drive move through. All right? Because I see it in you. It is possible. You're just getting in your own way. You're welcome. All right. I'm going to go so you can do blessings. Can you give us a blessing? I can. Thank you. We would appreciate that. We just love having you here. Thank you. The energies of God be with you and through you and about you. Let all that God is be known to you in some way. Let him feel you so that you can feel him. Let him come to you so that you can come to him in a greater way than ever before. You have been taught only to see him in one way, but see him in all the ways that he exists through nature, through technology, through the matrix, through the sun through the spirit, through the love, through the emotion and understanding, for he is in all of those things. Do not leave anything out, for he exists in all planes and in all places. So look at something and find God in it. Look at everything and see that the matrix runs through it, which God has made for you to use. Love all things, even those things that you feel are hurting. Love disease so that it may not bother you, but feel that it does not need to be with you. That it wants to be something outside so that it can experience you in a different way. Love all things. Love bacteria. Love virus. For it is part of what exists. And God is in it because it is alive. It does not mean to harm you. It just needs it just needs and wants to exist. But it doesn't have to exist in you. You can love it out here. Love it for what it is in nature. 
take away your illnesses by loving them away. Many blessings to you. Goodbye. Oh, hello. Welcome back, Jim. Thank you. Thank that was a great session. Thank you. Oh, okay. Are there blessings? We need some volunteers. All right. Angie's volunteered. Deb, Deb will volunteer. I'll do I'll do. Lucia will volunteer. It's Lucia. Lucia, sorry. Lucia, <laughs> yeah. And it's, yeah, Eva and Lucia, they get their names pronounced wrong all the time. <laughs> sorry. So how about Angela start? Okay. There is truth all through the universe, and there is truth in us. There is truth within you as well, and we all are united in some way. So let all things unite in truth, wisdom, and the power of God that comes through this truth to make it workable and to make it real. Live in the truth, and you live in God. Thank you. How about Deb next? Ayako aya onayakaya oto ayakatu etaya onaika a oto oyakaya ta nayako mayaka oyakaya o ataya onaika a onaya a o ata nayako taya taya o a nayaka taya o a nayaka oyakata ya a Namaste. Thank there, you. There is healing here. Hold on to your beliefs and all will be healed. Everyone that needs a healing may have it. They just need to accept it at this time. The energy of healing is with you. You just have to believe and accept it and know that it is in you. This is a time when you can make things happen and you can be well in the spirit and in the fact that you are on a mission it will become that you are free of these things and lucia ashona akola ashasoniki asakara ashasakoli shisini Asanoki aka asha sokoli ikiriki asha sanoki asonoki asha si aka la sha sa a o hisi kasha anokila anokosaka ashosili anomiki namaste i'm sending healing into the future so that all messages will be purified and come through the way that they should and the way that is meant to be open yourself so all can be pure and all can be right with the things that come through. And do we uh, have any other blessings? I'll do one. Okay, Don, that'd be great. Greetings 
please give up your fantasies and live in the real world but hold on to the fourth dimensional energy and ground all things are with you at this time and the energy that is coming within the several days will build you up in a way that you have never been built before acknowledge yourself as the powerful house or powerful being that you are okay i think that's it very good well what a great session it was today uh, do we know who's going to be speaking next week um i don't know karen would know but i think she's laying down um i'm, I'm back uh, max will be here next week oh okay. man wonderful yeah Okay. <laughs> so yeah much love thank you, you for that and uh please those of you that are interested in the heart and solstice in canada ottawa canada please let micheline me or uh angela know and those that are interested in the uh <clears throat> ascension workshop in august from 8 to the 12th please let us know uh, so that we can get uh, everything taken care of as quickly as possible. I know some of you are still deciding because of money situations or our vacation situations or things of that nature. Uh, but please let us know as soon as possible. We'd love to have you, and I know that you'd enjoy it. Micheline, what the dates are the 20 June. Yeah, the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. So we're, we'd be all together. On solstice, is it? it is three hundred and thirty-three dollars Canadian, which is less than that American. Yeah. Oh, American, it would be oh more or less two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, so those of you that are interested in that, please come. There's two, I think, two spaces open. Yes, please is do. Yes, there are two. We could make space for one more. If we have three people come, we'll, we'll take whoever wants to come to come now. This is this is really something that needs to, um, if it speaks to you and tugs at the heart, then I would um, I, I would recommend you come, and you will be welcomed open arms. So there there will be archangels there and Grindel and uh, many many others to occur. I'm sure with the teachings of the galactic energy healing. That's gonna be really, really powerful at this particular time. It, the energies that'll be coming through with that healing modality are going to be immense. So please do, if it's tugging at your heart, please go. And also, I, I'd love to see everybody at the at the um, uh, the next, uh, what's August it called? Meeting. August Ascension. The Ascension Workshop. workshop. All of a sudden, my mind went blank. Of course. So maybe I have my crown needs. It. Oh. Uh, but anyway, I, anyway uh, yes, I, I'm all going to. Yes, alrighty then. Oh, I popped in. Who's that? Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Jamie popped in back here. All right. Very well. Thank you, everybody. Love you so much. And I want to see all of you at the workshop because. I think that you'd all love it, but I want to meet you all. So that's the other reason. <laughs> so love you very much, and I'll talk to you later. Blessings, everyone. Thank you very much, Jim. Have a You're great welcome. lunch. <laughs> Have a great day. All right. Karen, are we off yet? Not yet? Changed.